takes forever to start. Okay, there we go. What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Casey and Michelle, and we are picking up with our discussion of the Daryl Dixon series. We're on episode four of season one, and it's been a minute since we talked about this show, you know? I guess we got we got way too much going on in our regular lives. We just can't, <laughs> yeah. can't get it together. But we, we are here. Daryl. What'd you say? We have been neglecting Daryl. We yeah. have. We have. But what we had decided to do was because the new season is coming in September next mm-hmm. month. Next month. How is it already August? But since it's coming next month, we decided that we would record the remaining episodes and release those right before season two. That way we can kind of flow into season two. So that's what we're doing. So anyway, let's talk about this. Casey was saying right before we started recording, she was laughing at my screen name about Laurent needing a whooping. And that's all I could hear in my head watching this episode. Like, why are you going to the Eiffel Tower? Why? People are looking for you. They're shooting for you. Your aunt, you. <clears throat> this boy needs a whooping. He don't listen. Yeah. yeah. He, he do not listen. I think that whole Messiah thing going a little bit to his damn head. You need to listen. Even if you the Messiah, a uh, sir, you can still get bit. I don't know what I want to say. I don't, I don't want to say it's going to his head because the first part of the episode that we see where it looks like he's just like praying and they're going around him, that was like a, a dream or a vision Daryl was having. But I, instead of it well, going to that, his that head- We know that vision ain't true because when he got to the Eiffel Tower, he hiding under a little board. Right, right. right. But right. I think instead of him, it going to his head, I just think, I think he's gotten to the point where it's overwhelming him. And he's just like, this is too much. It's too much to do. Then here come the people with the guns coming in shooting. This was from the last episode. You know, you find out, I guess at some point he really realized that Isabel was his aunt because you never hear him mention it up until the last episode or more specifically until this episode. So I just think everything was coming at him and he was just like, I need to get away. But come on, sir, you are in the middle of a zombie apocalypse in Paris in a city you have never been in. This is not the time for you to go and, oh, I've, I've always wanted to see the Eiffel Tower. My mother used to say, bruh, bruh. <laughs> and, and, you, and you already know how I feel about peeking through little holes. And <laughs> you, you, now you scared of the zombie. Now you scared. So I think what it was, he wasn't expecting that zombie to look back at him. That was yeah. kind of weird because, you know, we've been talking about with this show how we've been seeing all the different types of of new, quote unquote, new walkers and stuff. Like in Daryl's- You uh, know that the, there are variants. I know, I know. But I mean, I don't even know if we can call them variants because we've seen these types before. You know, I know that was the variant, that was the term that they used at the end of the main show, but- We've seen these types before. We've seen walkers climb steps and climb and turn doorknobs and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But for the sake of argument, for the sake of this show, we will say they are kind of variants. But when he looked through that hole and that one was like, what you looking at? I was like. And then my question is, okay, yeah, it looked through and saw him. So does that now mean, that don't mean you can hear him just because you see him doesn't mean you can hear him Mm because they don't communicate to Mm -hmm. each other like, oh, I see somebody. But then of course, right when he sees him, all the walkers start turning around and then that's when they start busting out the side. Right. But you had no reason to because there was no noise that would have drawn you out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? they, They really didn't have any reason to not remain within the space that they were in. You're right. I don't understand it because it's it's like the only other thing I could think of is that maybe they smelled him when he walked up, but I'm like, he wasn't bleeding. So it's not like they would smell blood or do we even know if they can smell like. Right. And we so haven't, many... 
we haven't had that. So, right. But a lot of times I feel like the noise that people make, sometimes the noise, they should be walkers there. And sometimes the noise, I'm like, that could have been a leaf. Like, how you turn it? We had that conversation with uh, Dead City. Remember, they came yeah. out the building and they scuttled away. I said, so those walkers didn't hear that door close? Yeah, that's a lot of noise. But then sometimes they barely move and I'm like, they, that could have been a dog or something. I mean, like the the natural noise of the world mm -hmm. and you turn. Yeah. But it was but then, weird because it's like, I would have expected them to come straight through at first. Yeah. Not the ones coming from the side because why are y'all even aware that he is there? He wasn't making a lot of noise. He didn't say anything. And I really doubt if they just heard him go <gasps> when he saw, like, right. I, I don't know. Some some of the things that I've noticed with the shows, as far as the behavior of either certain characters or the way that they have the walkers behaving, they don't seem consistent. And I don't know if that's on purpose for us to say, okay, you think you know what what's going on and you think you know what to expect. But they're throwing us a curveball saying, okay, this is, you know, nothing is predictable. Because mm -hmm. other than that, it makes no sense for them to come from the sides to try to get him. Yeah. And the one that um the one that bent down and looked up under the thing when he was hiding up under it. Like how he's up under there. Right. Yeah, it just But then that also leads to wonder because remember when after Daryl fell through the roof and he got out, remember he was walking up the stairs, there was somebody playing the cello. And there was another couple in an apartment next door. They was just talking regular. Like, he saw walkers down below, but like, you have a long, loud stream of music. Because if nothing else, go back to the orchestra with the man with the zombie orchestra, all the noise he was making. Right. And he started drawing walkers. Mm -hmm. But you playing a whole concert in your living room, and the people across the hall is chilling and making, you know being lovey-dovey all out and mm -hmm. no walkers nothing the only thing i can think of is that the music that she was playing was soothing and they probably if if she's pl if she plays it regularly it's probably something that they i don't know ignore which again doesn't make sense because that's not how we've known walkers to behave mm -hmm. but even even in the water when Daryl was in the wa water we know walkers can't swim. Why are y'all under underwater grabbing his feet? That made no sense to me. And then when he when <laughs> this was the thing with the water, when he they was floating, but then when he stabbed them, they start sinking. Wouldn't you go up? <laughs> wouldn't your body rise? You wouldn't sink down. So the only thing I can think of is because this is France. Mm -hmm. And because this seemingly was where either it started or where they were working on things or because they've been experiment, whatever the case may be, maybe their walkers are different and behave <laughs> differently. Because other than that, I mean, even with the other stuff that we've seen from the first episode, when Daryl was traveling cross country by himself, you would think he would have picked up a couple of stragglers following him. You can't tell me the whole country is is empty of walkers. And even when he was walking above on that bridge and you saw the little walkers down below, they would have heard him. Those were rocks he was walking on. They mm -hmm. would have done something to kind of like heard themselves trying to figure out what this noise was. It's, it's just that we've seen... The, the walkers we've seen in this particular show, they act so different. And maybe it's on purpose. Maybe they're saying, hey, you think you know everything about the walkers, but you don't. Just like with the burning walkers. We talked about that first episode. The fact that you can kill these walkers, but if they grab you, they're burning you. Like, we, we've definitely never seen that before. Michelle, what was that eye roll? I saw it <laughs> because I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, I, I can't, I can't see it. They just have to have the foundations have to be the same, but the variance of how the walkers act can be 
different mm -hmm. because it just can't be like I'm a like I'm a scientist that got a PhD. It just can't be completely different. But as long as we got the same thing, we're sensitive to sound. Um, we have our motivation is just eat. But everything else can be different. It can be. Because I'm hoping that if I go to Australia, the walkers are going to be different there. Because it has adapted to the environment. I need them to be different. I need them to be the same type of walkers I'm used to so I know how the hell to handle them. That part. I don't yeah. need burning walkers. I don't need walkers that can... Well, I mean, we saw this with Dead City too. The walkers that are coming out of second and third story apartments and splatting on the ground but you're not splatting hard enough for your brain to no, that was in this one too remember when they went to isabel's apartment yeah they that's what i'm saying too. yeah that's what i'm saying that's because they're walking towards the the noise and they don't get you know that they're gonna fall but yeah but if you but, fall from two three ten stories technically speaking your body should splat that includes yeah but it depends on how body. you fall how you fall like if you go feet first not necessarily your brain could still be intact enough mm -hmm. to be a walker. It's just that you're going to be like sliding and not crawling or walking. <laughs> However, I, I still feel like it's, it's also due to the research too, because there's no way for a walker to be a burning walker. Like there's nothing in the atmosphere, nothing in oh. the environment that right. you turn into a walker that can burn someone. Mm -hmm. So it, like they had to be doing some experiments or something right yeah. but why yeah. would we ever get the answer to... though will we i Probably. mean i don't know if you think about it um when what's his name went to go find madame janae we saw that she was doing some kind of experimentation on some walkers and um i'm not sure what it was they were trying to do but like after what was it 16 seconds the walker just kind of um I don't even know how to describe what it did. It's almost like it started panicking and it ran towards the, the window and splatted mm -hmm. open. So mm -hmm. that could have something to do with those experiments. Maybe they have more, more locations where they're doing the experiments. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe well, they the had to do... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, maybe it had to do with... Maybe they tried a cure at the beginning yeah. and the cure yeah, just I, I didn't... I thought that too work mm -hmm. the way they thought it would and that was probably maybe a side effect mm -hmm. because they my died. thought would be if, if that's what they're doing they, they in order for that to work because it, it, it seems as though they're trying to have controlled experiments right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. so how would all of the walkers like that were in the market that Daryl first came across how would they get infected enough to Burn, or maybe that's why there are no people around. Maybe they did something chemically, you know, to that um, area yeah. that affected people once they died, of course. Right. But we, we don't know. Could have mm -hmm. been bombed. Kind of like in the States where they, they um did the nuclear um attacks. Right, right. Maybe they tried to do something uh chemical. Because that could be, because they did say they bombed Paris, but that could be, you know, if it was a chemical attack, mm -hmm. why there are no people around? Right. I mean, there's still grass and vegetation, but regardless. So mm -hmm. there are no yeah, people. Yeah, but not around. much. Not much. True. There's no yeah. people around, but the walkers that were dormant that awakened once Daryl came out had died effectively from whatever bomb was bombed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just a theory. Yeah. That could be a combo. It could be the bomb and they took something beforehand. Could and it had a chemical reaction. Yeah. To make them Maybe burning. something similar to what the CRM was doing. Remember um in Omaha. Uh, uh -huh. Remember they were doing some experiments and something mm -hmm. got out of hand and they ended up bombing. Mm -hmm. So it could be something similar. I mean, it could be using the any... gas and yeah. then the medication that's already in your system mm -hmm. has a reaction and then your blood or what your whatever it is is oozing is right you know right toxic either, look either way it goes laurent don't need to be trying to go off on his own while all of this stuff is going on and why like, people just looking for him well i was gonna i was gonna say something when you said that 
So again, we have to give him that he has not been out in the world and that he is emotionally immature. Uh-huh. He doesn't know that he, he needs to completely listen. Emotionally immature is the words we're using. <laughs> he like knows? he's a okay, what age did we say he was again? We keep probably keep around 13-ish. He's 13-ish, but has mm -hmm. like the mental capacity of a eight year old year. because he's been sheltered. Hi. I'm sorry. But he is not too sheltered enough to know while you read in the Bible to father, whatever the hell his name was, he in a room behind the door because he had the door doing this shit trying to get you. Right, he, but he they, got made, that it. So they made it. So they made it. So they made it where you shouldn't be afraid. They, they made him not afraid. He know these things can kill him. He know if he get close enough, because you saw how far back he was standing when he was reading that goddamn Bible. He was over there. Yeah, he but he's not afraid he though. Him. But he's he, not afraid. I wouldn't be afraid if it was a door either. <laughs> but you see, he got afraid and he hid under that goddamn board at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yes, but he I, couldn't he couldn't I control he didn't. couldn't control his yeah. environment. However, but it's yeah, like just an emotionally immature. That that too, but also it's like you see these people are coming in, and if you have enough foresight. Like, again, we still don't know what the deal is really with this kid. We just know that he seems to have heightened sensitivities and he can tell when some shit is about to pop off. If you knew people were coming with guns and you kind of felt like they were coming because of you or because of your aunt or whatever, wouldn't you be worried enough about your aunt to not run off, to stay and see if mm -hmm. she's okay? I mean... Mm -hmm. And again, I, I get it. He's sheltered. He does not have the proper, uh, one, he doesn't have the proper social skills, but two, he also doesn't have the correct fight or flight reflexes that most people would have. But it's like, dude, you know that they kept you safe for a reason, regardless of whether you agree with that reason or not, or you think that that is the case, which all indication kind of, points to him knowing that they're treating him like a messiah and he is kind of reluctant about it but he's accepting of it so you should already know in some sense how to behave because they have been protecting you but they he have been no, protecting you with a purpose but he ain't no dumb boy he figured out uh quinn is his dad he figured that out right so he can't, he, he not allowed to be um, naive on some selectively naive, yes. Expert. But, but then, that, but that's kids though, you know, sometimes they can they can pick up on subtle things that we think that we're hiding from them, and but then sometimes they do things and you'd be like, Oh, I forgot, you are a kid, and that's what just that is what's happening. Is that we're what's happening? Getting, <laughs> because we're not used to this type of kid. Okay, all our okay, other this kids, is true. I'll give you that. All, all our, our other, other kids, kids are, are, are okay. can run stuff. They yes. can run shit. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. and they take can. care of a whole community. Yes. And, and even the ones who they we would not they save. groups of people. Come yeah. on. Yeah, because I was gonna say, because even the ones that we wouldn't say can run stuff, like let's say a Herschel or a Gracie, they still have enough sense. Yeah, to the know what they're along. supposed they, to do, but they've yeah. also been trained in that, mm -hmm. so it's kind of different. But he, he like, hasn't. Leave him alone. He hasn't. What, look, don't get on Gracie. Gracie didn't know to stay out the damn basement. <laughs> she made one mistake. It's okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. okay. She made one. And okay. She was panicking. There was a lot going on. Okay. There was a storm. There were walkers. Mm -hmm. So yeah but but you know I, with his with his circumstances and everything that's going on around him it's like at some point you have to have the common sense. Like common sense is not taught. That is something that is basically like you look at it and you know what you're supposed to do 
what you're not supposed to do. I'm not saying he's supposed to have it in spades, but there are certain things that he should know. And one of the things is you don't run off in the middle of a city that you are not familiar with when people with guns are chasing you. Especially not even the guns, the walkers. Right. Don't even talk about the people. But, but, but the th okay, but here's the thing. Human threat. But with the walkers, at least the walkers are, as Michelle said earlier, they're single-minded. If they see him walking, they're going to follow him. If he can run and get away from them or hide, they're not going to say, oh, where did that boy go? They're just going to keep walking with actual live people with or without guns. These people can see things, they can calculate, they can plan, they can, you know, they can make adjustments for, oh, he was right here, but he's not. Okay, do we need to go left? Do we need to go right? They have that deductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and we've said this with the other show, with all of the other shows, the people are the real monsters in these situations, mm -hmm. not the walkers. The walkers, yeah, you might get afraid, you might panic. But at some point, you can look at the walkers and, and look at what you're doing and how they respond to it and say, okay, well, if I do this, they're going to keep coming after me. But if I hide behind this building over here and don't move, they'll just ignore me and go past. You at least have, can have that kind of common sense. People know because people are actually living, breathing, thinking things. And he should, he should. He should have had a better response, especially after what happened at the Abbey. Like, you know, these are the same people who came after you there. So if you know this and you understand I, this, stay, stay with the one motherfucker who been killing everybody. First thing. And if nothing else, he knows enough. He knows that they think he's the savior. Mm -hmm. He knows yeah. that. Even in knowing that, you should know the people who are around you who are trying to protect you. And you can't just naively wander streets, talk to people, go up to people. There are people who don't want you to, them moving you from place to place to place, trying to get you. They know, you. Laurent knows that they are trying to get him to the nest. Mm -hmm. They know the nest is safe. So, in 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 your traipsing to get to the nest, why would you do anything to jeopardize the people who are getting you there? That and that that's my thing. Like even if you were upset, and again, I am thinking thirteen year old boy emotionally immature or yeah. emotionally not, you know, not mature enough. I would say if you overheard this emotion. conversation with mm -hmm. your aunt and with Daryl, and you took whatever hurt emotions you have from that you would still think that he would at least at some point maybe after an hour or two of cooling off remember this happened at night he was at Paris during the day so several hours have passed at some point you should have stopped and thought about what you were doing mm -hmm. like oh wait a minute is my aunt okay Oh, are, are all these other people okay? Even if you're pissed at your aunt and at Daryl, you have all of these other people who have made it known that they depend on you, that they are looking to you mm -hmm. for inspiration. You just going to leave them there with the people with the guns? Knowing that the people with the guns are looking for either you or Daryl? Like... And yeah. it's not, it's, and it's not like they being quiet about the fact they looking for Daryl. Everybody know they looking for the American. American. Everybody. No, American. If nothing else, you say you care about Daryl. Why would you do anything that's going to jeopardize him? Yeah. But I mean, again, we just have to chalk it up. I, I have to be emotionally be immature. Thirteen year old. Yeah. Yeah. But, we do. I'm sorry. And really, thirteen, but. Maturity wise, I would say still like nine. Yeah. Because of being sheltered. Yeah. And Completely having sheltered. grown up in a normal world. Right. So he so, doesn't have the normal responses. That true. Like has, Judith at 13 that. was 27. Yes. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but he's like, he's backwards. So, you know, when he's mad, he's running off. He's not thinking about, he's not thinking about how this hurts other people. He's not thinking about that. But I also, unfortunately, blame the adults. Because oh, you're, you are not telling him the the, the severity mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. you wandering off. And that's um, the whole issue yeah. that has. Is not even with the walkers. These mm -hmm. people are trying to catch you. Mm -hmm. So, like, when he got in the car, when, you know, when old boy had my car, he wasn't even trying to get out the car. He was like, Daryl, like, we're going for a ride. What? No, he was expecting Daryl to be able to knock out all of these people and then come get him. But yeah, I I feel if they like they don't hurry up and give Daryl a crossbow. I'm I'm so tired of this the little stick with the little wand thing on it. I'm so tired of it. I need my my guy to have a a a a, a bow and arrow. They crossbow. they they can't crossbow. give Daryl a bow and arrow because then this would only be a two episode because <laughs> <laughs> he'd have killed everyone. Like like. When they kill the pigeon dude, at first, when when he when he um threw his knife at the first guy, it kind of threw me off because I was like, "Wait, where did that come from?" I'm like, "Oh, me too." He his but yeah, I mean, you give Daryl crossbow, most of these folks would have been over and done with. Period. But we have All to right. see. I mean. I think one of the things about this show is it is exploring Daryl more thoroughly as a character and kind of opening up so that he's not just this one dimensional or two dimensional character. Mm -hmm. We're seeing mm -hmm. other aspects of him. And, you know, the, the crossbow is very much an extension of who he is. Like you almost never see him without it. And we know that his weapon of choice besides the knives, but Again, different country, different walkers, different rules. So you got to show him be able to um, adjust, unlike Laurent. But, you know, Daryl has way more experience because, again, this is like 13, 14 years after the fact. Daryl mm -hmm. has had time to make those adjustments. I mean, think about it. When we first met Daryl, technically speaking, he was also an emotionally stunted adult because mm -hmm. of everything he had been through and it's because of the people that he's had around him and the things that he has seen and learned and you know grown to care for that we see him evolve into this person Laurent could very well become a person like that but he's gonna have to have people I hate to say it like Daryl around him because Daryl is the one person who is not trying to um not trying to shelter him He's not sugarcoating anything for him. He's letting him know, okay, these are the things that you're going to have to do. And, you know, there are bad people who will do this. And he's basically doing everything for Laurent in the short time that they've been together that Isabel and the sisters should have been doing from start. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand you want him to try to have as normal a childhood as he can can given the circumstances of his birth given the circumstances of the world and everything but you can't shield him to the point where if he steps outside your door is dangerous because you won't always be there to protect him you see that there's only two nuns left from the entire abbey y'all can y'all aren't going to be able to protect him the whole time at all I mean, even in, at the end of this episode, Laurent is going in one direction while Sylvie is in another and Isabel is in another because Isabel is going to go back to Quinn to try to make sure that Laurent and Daryl can get away. So you have basically left this child that you have raised from birth, that you have sheltered, protected, and not given the proper tools or knowledge to go out into the world as it is but now you've left him with someone who yes daryl has helped y'all he's become a friend he's you know this but technically speaking daryl is still a stranger not to mention the guy who's who's running the boat so you've done all of this for this child just to send him off with two strangers like make it make sense 
It doesn't. It makes sense to her. No, it doesn't. Because even Daryl was like, get your ass in the boat. What are you doing? <laughs> but I mean, I hate to say, Daryl is used to this. I was thinking about this watching this episode. I was like, why is it that Daryl is the one who's always getting left, getting left with the kids? With some kids. <laughs> but always. Daryl is all Daryl is the one who's gonna give it to him straight, even when Judith was a little one. Mm -hmm. He's gonna give it to him straight mm -hmm. and say, Okay, this is what we're doing, this is why he's yeah. not gonna sugarcoat it because he knows that sugarcoating can kill those kids. I mean, you yeah. think about you think about the kids that we have lost in this um show, the Lizzie's, the the Mika's, you know, those two kids, especially those two kids. Because people weren't being truthful with them about what was going on. Now, Carol tried. She tried to be a little bit, mm, she tried not to be so in your face with it. But like Lizzie's whole thing was a little bit different because it's already hard enough trying to deal with somebody with mental health issues or someone who's different in a regular world. Now you're trying to do it in a zombie world and where things don't make sense to y'all, it makes sense to her. So it's kind of hard to, and to you be honest. At that point, you intentionally weaponize the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also at the same time, what happened when you intentionally weaponize those kids? One of them took that knowledge and applied her own skewed way of thinking and ended up killing her sister and was about to kill Judith because something in her brain told her that they would come back and they would still be who they are. So it's uh it's 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 a weird thing. I mean, and trying to trying to balance that with what you should tell a kid, what you shouldn't tell a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there's I think in this kind of situation, there really is no right or wrong way to do it. You know, no. for the most part. Now there is a wrong way. You if you don't tell the children what the danger is, that's mm -hmm. wrong. But if you also teach those children that oh, everybody who comes after who comes towards you, that's a danger. You just need to kill them. And go, kind of like what um, what's her name, um, Michonne's friend was doing, or, or kind of like what the people at Padre were doing. It's kind of like one extreme to the other, right. They need There's to find no a happen. balance, especially especially when it comes to the kids. Because yeah. yes, they need to be knowledgeable about what the fuck is going on, but they also need to be smart and have some fucking common sense. Right, they do. Yeah. To like um, just just in case people get separated, they can yes. handle themselves for uh, till someone can get to them. Right. Right. And, and but we even said, or I even said that then with the whole uh prison thing, when that whole prison thing happened, like y'all needed to have a better plan. Like yeah. they lived like, in a world where they thought them. right. Mm -hmm. They lived in a world where they thought nothing bad would ever happen. We found mm -hmm. this prison, we made it safe. Like they didn't have a plan if something goes bad. Because mm -hmm. yes, they had very you, you know, especially during the time jumps, those were periods where nothing bad happened. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how we were able to get our time jumps because nothing significant happened. So let's jump time. But during this jump time, are y'all putting plans in place? Are you having where if this happens, this is what you do? They did once they got to Alexandria. So when the whisperers came, they were hiding in sewers, but it took the prison for that to happen. You know what I mean? When that's one of those things in the beginning, like, yeah, okay, great. We found this safe place. But if we have to leave, if we have to run, if somebody comes and tries to take this for their own, mm -hmm. this is what we need to do. Which is crazy because they had to evacuate the prison once before because of the governor. They left the prison. He came in, thought that they had left, and then they came back. So you would think that when they came you back, have. they would have a different plan but i guess they really didn't think the governor was going to come back and do it i that's a whole other thing because that whole the whole way that 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 was handled i think was kind of i think that was one of the things that where rick had to learn to be a different rick because 
technically speaking, the, the governor probably should have been dead way before all of that happened. But that's neither here nor there. Let's but you know, Michonne had been going out there trying to kill his ass. So we knew that. Yeah. But then yeah. even she got complacent where, okay, I've gone, I've searched, I can't find them. We good. Now her and her show out outside the gates you know, picking berries and collecting bodies and shit. Right. And now we lose him. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it, it, you still yeah. should have had something in place in my mind. Yeah. That if shit go down, if shit go bad, because like me and my kids, you know, we all watched The Walking Dead and we had that. I said shit, if, if something go down and we know everybody meet at the house, like we'll figure it right. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make it home. Mm -hmm. No matter what's mm -hmm. going on, make it home. And from right. there. So you like you have to have these things. Mm -hmm. Like if nothing else, make it to the house. We can figure it out once we get there. Right. And and like even with with this, Izzy searched for Laurent all night. But when she couldn't find him, what did she do? She went back to her old apartment in Paris. Daryl figured out where she would go and he went there. Now, of course, because Laurent did not grow up in Paris. He probably wouldn't have known how to get there, even if they had said, okay, if something happens and we get separated, this is where you go. Go to the last place. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have been able to find that anyway, but there still should have been some kind of plan. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, because with a resistance group, such as where, where they were, they should have all had plans because anytime you have that type of resistance and you have a dictatorship, you're never safe. So you should always have a, a backup plan or somewhere else to go um, just in case something like that happens. But as it is, right. you just, you just sitting there answering questions for this woman and trying to be defiant while she taking your screaming baby and you sitting there looking like, is she about to kill this child? <laughs> Because the way that baby was screaming, <laughs> Madison Janae was a little too, she was a little too calm. And I was like, she about to kill this baby. That's why I said to her, oh Lord, she's going to break the baby neck. <laughs> but yeah, just, the baby killer. Yeah. But, okay, we're going to come off Laurent for a little bit. Let's let's go to some of the other stuff that we, uh, that we had in this episode. So, um, I realize it's the zombie apocalypse. I realize this man is probably taking care of you for the last however many years, but ain't no way I'm finna sit here and just let you be planning to bring your ex-girlfriend back into my house. What? What? He said what he said. He did. You know what? He was making that space for her. It was always for her. He didn't know whether or not she was dead or alive, but that was always meant for her. Because when when he asked uh, Gennot for the painting, and she was like, why you ask for a painting? <laughs> he was like, it ain't for you. <laughs> right. But my thing is, you're sitting here you have been distant with this woman ever since Isabel walked her ass into your club. You have been snarky to her. You have been nasty to her. But you're going to give her a loaded gun and tell her to go uh, to go guard your son? Really? Really? He would have been shot. It's not like anybody would have come ain't no baby killer. She's mm -hmm. not a baby killer. She not what what Laurent said. You have no, uh, she was You're nice. nice. Don't want nobody to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, nice. What? I'm nice too, but in the zombie apocalypse, in that kind of situation, you is not about to. We done lived and had this great little mini right. life, and you gonna bring your little ex baby mama in? Nah. We can be petty. We not, can be look, petty. Not even the ex baby mama. The ex baby mama sister. Look. Right. Right, girl, girl, you have the nerve to to talk to Laurent and act like, oh, he was he was gonna be the best daddy in the world. You was trying to leave the girl behind because you knew she was pregnant, and you knew it was you. You was trying to leave her behind to her own devices and do whatever, just so long as you can get easy. 
out the way. Speaking of which, what what Isabel got going on? Because this it's been 13, 14 years. This man is still pining for her. What like because, because, because I mean their thighs. Okay, first of all, you already know. <laughs> okay. The pickings are slim. And he has had some women and realized, Lord, come on. If I see my ex boy, any problems we <laughs> have, it's okay. Which is crazy if you think about Isabel's background before all of this happened. I mean, the, the dude that was in the episode that uh, Daryl was basically beating and torturing, he basically gave the rundown. And we saw this in, what was it, the, the second episode? Like, Izzy was a party girl. She was a drug addict. She was... Um, she was a hustler. It, it's very um, and very... he missed that challenging. She was challenging. You never knew what you was gonna get someday. <laughs> it was like one day she may be slashing her wrist. The next day she on top of the world. He loved that life. These chicks are born up in this apocalypse. I want my woman back. I guess this is my woman, and she made it. Oh yeah, that's a yeah. true love story, right? Right. Now. She made it. You left me in me. the middle of. You left me in the middle of Paris. Stole my car. Left me standing in the middle of the street. But ever since you left, I know why you ran. I know, but your heart gonna bring <laughs> you back to me, baby. And guess right. what he did? Led you right back to me, baby. Right. And now Tracy I gotta make up her own R and B <laughs> song, nineties R and B song. <laughs> Man, that bitch is bad. She made it. Oh, and can we can we can run this. We can and run Paris now. We can run it. I can get you all the paintings you want. Oh my goodness. Me and, me, me and Michelle saw the same story. <laughs> yeah, I, I see it. You see what I'm saying? I see it. Y'all got the whole well, 80s R and B jam going on with the talk with the talking intro and everything. You just need a, wait, look where my lighter. You just need a lighter. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse love story. Mm -hmm. But okay, I got a little so, torch. Oh, look, look, <laughs> <laughs> look! I know I got some matches up here somewhere. Light a match stick. But okay, so speaking of matter, Janae. So when she does go to, um, I can't think of what the, the place where the rebels were, and she starts talking to them, the one lady who was uh, mourning her husband, she's the one who has like the, the lines in this one. She's the one that's kind of very um, belligerent. She's the one that's talking to Madame Janae like, whatever, Laurent's, gonna, Laurent's here, he's going to save us. And then she starts talking about this story that she's heard about this boy who was a miracle based on the details of his birth. First of all, who's going around telling people about Laurent's birth? I mean, I understand is there true. is a movement, but y'all need to learn how to keep some shit. To your damn self. Right. Right. I mean, but they doing good. We don't even have like TikTok and Facebook. I mean, like it's just, it just gets around. But my thing is, if you are supposed to be doing what you're doing to help protect this boy, you don't think it's prudent to like keep certain details to yourself? I mean, I understand you want to tell the other rebels, give them something to, I don't know, something to be inspired by, something to fight for, blah, blah, blah. But if the enemy knows this information you don't think she's gonna do whatever she needs to try to do to eliminate that because she's trying to be the one that's quote-unquote bringing hope to the people she's trying to unite everyone under one cause and, mm -hmm. to, cause. and she's, yeah to to bring france back and if you have this messiah figure that's kind of out there not only messiah figure in the form of a child that's that's gonna interrupt her plans. You don't think she's not gonna try to do something about that? Like, y'all need. To, uh, 
I I don't I don't know what it is about these folks. But again, it's like they, they don't see think... danger. Yeah. That's what it is. They don't see nobody in this senses danger. Right. They don't have the sense of, oh, you know, maybe this will endanger me in the future by just rambling off at the fucking mouth. Like, like a whole zombie apocalypse didn't tell you that you need to be careful with stuff. Really? And if especially knows, information. That's, that's the thing that should have you worried. Like, oh, yeah. That, that doesn't like, seem like that'd be good. <laughs> like you have this child and word has gotten around about him, about his quote unquote miracle birth. Okay, here's the other thing. If you're going to talk about this child, okay, mm -hmm. do y'all really have to talk about the birth? Who is giving out that information? Because the only people who were there were the nuns. And if this is such a big deal that you guys think you have to protect him in the way that you have protected him since birth, why are y'all telling people about this miraculous birth? Because right. we know how it is with people who have that kind of religious fanaticism. If there were enough people around, they could have been like, oh, we need to go see the miracle child. Mm -hmm. They could have led. It, it just, it doesn't make sense that they would do that. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't understand it. it. No, it could have, it could have also been, because I'm sure over time, like before Daryl got there and fucked everything up, I'm sure. Daryl did not look. They was fine before he showed up. Anywho, I'm sure that there were people who went through the Abbey at points in time in their travels. Because they don't look like they would be the type of people to turn people who needed help away. True. So I'm sure because he in 13 years, you know, people have, he, when he was a baby, why is there a baby here? Why is there a baby crying? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even if it's not meant to be like gossipy, it's mm -hmm. gossipy. Women are still women. And even if they're talking about it amongst themselves, hell, you hear how people keep having conversations and people around the corner hearing and shit. So, it, you know, it, it's very, very possible that over the 13 years, people who have been in and out of the Abbey, there's a little boy. Oh, you you know, I heard there's a little boy here. That little boy, his mom died, whatever, whatever. He, you know, he's a miracle baby, basically. Right. So yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. Because you're right. Because once uh, Isabel got there, she became a nun. And she was there. So it, it had to be people who, like I said, within their travels, mm -hmm. made pit stops at the Abbey. Because they wasn't turning nobody the hell away. No. But there's just certain certain things that you don't need to tell. Like, you could say something like, oh, his mom died giving birth to him. Which was true. But you don't have, like, saying that in and of itself just oh his mother died in childbirth that would not be cause for a quote-unquote miraculous birth so somebody not the apocalypse they know people die huh i said they wouldn't even have to say during childbirth they know it's a zombie apocalypse they know people die right but right. i mean even, even if it wasn't zombie apocalypse she could have been staying there seeking shelter before everything went down and gave birth and died. So somebody within that Abbey put out too much information. You don't have to say that this is a miracle birth. You could just be like, oh yeah, his mom was on the road. She went into labor, came in, died. And then because everything that was going on, we just kept the baby because we had no we had no next of kin we had no reference the phones were whatever right. they could have made any kind of explanation and it would have fit because of what was going on but okay. for madame Janet to hear something about a child who had a miracle birth that means that that story has gone around that means somebody from that abbey leaked that story that oh you know he was no, born somebody from the abbey I, I just don't. I do think it was a traveler, you know, someone who, who came across. I don't think they was purposely putting out that information because as hard as they trying to protect him, why would they put that out there? It, it, it would make no sense. 
But why would they even allow, like, even if a stranger was there, why would a stranger have access to the information that it was a quote unquote miracle birth? That's the thing that's bothering me. Yeah, they you shouldn't have that, information. It, that a child was born at the Abbey, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But the whole fact that you're using the word miracle birth. Mm -hmm. So you are already saying that there was something very unusual about the way this child was born. And it's that unusual birth, that quote unquote miracle birth that is giving everyone reason to feel like this child is the next Messiah. You don't get that just from a traveler saying, oh, there's a baby in the Abbey. They can have baby. They could have had 10 babies in the Abbey, but you wouldn't necessarily say all 10 of those babies are going to be the new Messiah. Somebody opened their mouth too much. Somebody said something too much. Someone mm -hmm let something slip because for Madam Janae to have that kind of information or for it to be that kind of known rumor amongst the rebels yeah maybe like I said if you're using him as a figurehead as you if you're using him as inspiration okay yeah but for the other people the people on the other side to have that information it just it doesn't make sense because you're literally pinning a target on his back for something like that especially when you have a person like madame janae who is trying to get all of the power for herself but anyway um so these um i cannot remember what is the name of this group hi apollo what is the name of the group the the rebel group with falu and emil and all of them okay but anyway but anyway so the rebel group when daryl and isabel are trying to find a way unity back, of hope I mean, oh you, yes union of hope mm -hmm. when they are trying to find their way olivia pope <laughs> she said, union of, of hope. hope oh okay yeah <laughs> no if they had olivia pope in this it it, it would be a totally, be a different, totally different show totally different show but when they're trying to find a way to get back into Quinn's place uh to sneak Daryl back in so he can rescue Laurent um I was sitting there like okay you guys are throwing all of these these little um Molotov cocktails and you're shooting you're in this small space you mean to tell me ain't nobody get hit except for Emil that once on his leg Every time they stepped out full body to throw, full body. I'm like, huh? Nobody got shot? Right, right. Okay. Like, what kind of training, what kind of security training are y'all doing to these people in these communities? They, they, they was trying to see through the fire. So that's what happened. Because mm -hmm. you have what? Falu, Emil, the one other guy, the one girl, and I think it was one other guy, it was five of them. I think it was five on the other side. So you mean to tell me all your Molotov cocktails are, are hitting. Nothing is like really exploding. <laughs> but one, those people are still okay enough to be shooting at you. And two, they're shooting at you in such a way that nobody gets hit until Emil gets that little skin graft on his <laughs> leg. Really? Not a skin girl. But I mean And then wait, and then he was like, after he got shot, this is the part that he was like, no, we gotta keep going. They threw three more and left. Like <laughs> you acted like it was a barrage of stuff coming. Like, no, we gotta keep going, we gotta keep going. Don't stop because I'm Three? You threw three cocktails? My thing is for you those... You may as well threw the last two that was in the little container. Right. Or the people who were on the other side, the Quinn's people, you have some people shooting. Y'all are literally only across one set of train tracks. One or two of y'all could have ran around to the side, hid behind the wall, and they, like... No, but they didn't know where they was hiding. 
So they ain't want to, you know, run out inadvertently and get shot. It's 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 not like they had many many choices. It's not like they had many options. I mean, literally, you you got the open space, you got the little bit of wall. That's pretty much it. I know, but I'm saying, like, still. No, no, no. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> still. Just stop. No. I'm, no. Just, I'm just saying, I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. No. There is not, because, I mean, you didn't, one, you didn't have much room to begin with. Two, y'all could have came out over this track. And while Emil and all of those people were kind of behind the wall making some, you know, lighting the Molotov cocktails, y'all could have been right up here, up against the wall. And then as soon as they came out, y'all uh, y'all could just came across the corner, came around the corner. Pew, pew, pew. It would have been done. They were not thinking. We, are, we have already established. Apparently, they don't do a they, lot of that in this, at in this all. city. Unless yeah. you're in the military, they ain't training you. And even some of the stuff we see the military do is kind of like huh? the military ain't too sharp, especially if some girl killed both of y'all in the first damn episode, y'all. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. What kind but, of military is this? Just give you a gun. You know, so you know a guy who know a guy. Oh, okay, you can have a gun. I think part of the problem is they've all gotten complacent, including Daryl. We yeah. said this with the first episode. How you gonna walk into a warehouse and not check to see if there are any walkers in there? And I mean, I get it. He walked pretty much the whole half a countryside of France and no walkers followed him. But again, complacency. It's stupid. We see a it lot of it. In, his part. But I mean, it's not, and it's not even just him. It's not just France. We saw it in Dead City mm -hmm. with Maggie and Negan, or more so, I, I would say, with Maggie. You know, as far, especially like, I think the first scene we see of her where she's across the water looking into New Jersey and she's crying and, and the walkers come past her and one of them grabs her leg and she starts like beating on it, but she's screaming and making all this noise. I'm like, did you not just see the herd that just walked past you? So it's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of complacency in, in these characters. And I think because it's been so long that mm -hmm. they just have gotten to a point where they just aren't being as diligent with everything. And it's, it's starting to show. They're they're making very... Stupid-ass decisions. I, yeah, I was going yeah, to say, I don't say, say stupid say decisions, but... Irrational, irrelevant irresponsible there you go girl bring out the thesaurus mm -hmm. <laughs> all of those decisions not mm -hmm. smart right it's like y'all haven't been in the zombie apocalypse for 13 fucking years y'all act like y'all back on day one and don't remember shit or they act like they know so much and they're so familiar with it that they take <laughs> it for granted that they just gonna be able to the do the basic it. shit the, the basic shit is the shit you should never forget yeah. Right, it's oh, just it should be natural. Check in the room before you walk in. Like that's that's zombie one hundred and one. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Knock on the wall. Knock on the door. Knock on something to say, "Hey, who's in here with me?" Before you just go all willy nilly, like, "Oh, no one's home. Let me go in and start moving shit around." And right. then, apparently, zombies from being dormant wake up and they're quiet as fuck because you don't hear them. You hear them a little bit, depending on where they are. Like, if they're in a tunnel, you hear them. If but they're in the, in the market, you don't hear them when they're coming up from being creaked with the creek boards, and you, but you get a quiet feel, and you don't hear that. Don't when, when there's a herd up under the Eiffel Tower, you don't hear them? Mm -mm. Like, I... Nope. None of it. I don't know. And like I said, I just maybe it's that they want us to look at these differently. But it's just, it, it's kind of weird the way that all of this is happening. What are we supposed to be looking at differently? I mean, just looking at things from a different perspective. These are French walkers. These are, you know, like I said, they're they're different. I I don't I don't know, because other than that, I can't think of why they would change 
the formula for lack of better words. Like you said, we know we know what walkers are. We know how they behave. We know what they do. We know how to kill them. We know how to lure them. We know how to herd them, all this other stuff. But you see, well, I won't even talk about like Isabel and them because they're really not used to it. But even with Daryl, like when Laurent gets taken, he's standing there looking at the car. Isabel is she's got the one guy who's still alive on the ground with the gun but it's like all of a sudden they don't have to worry about this swarm of walkers coming around them they're just sitting there taking a beat to realize oh my god Laurent is gone you still got about a hundred walkers that's in your background but mm -hmm. none of them are coming near you at this point I mean they I was, realized they was a trying man. to see what happened too <laughs> I mean, I realize you got three on the ground, <laughs> but that that one by that one live body is only gonna satisfy what you can probably only get ten walkers right around them. That <laughs> that's actually gonna be able to get them. No, some of those walkers should have still been attacking Daryl, but Daryl was just sitting there looking at the car. Like, why he ain't snatched the little boy out is the real question. Because you had his whole arm. All you do is one of these. Well, I mean, somebody else was trying to grab Daryl from the other side and he was trying to fight them. So, so I kind of sort of get that. <sighs> but I'm kind of like Michelle at the beginning. Why the hell wasn't Laurent trying to get out the car at that point? You turn around and look. Daryl, you see Daryl is trying to get to you. Why are you not meeting him halfway? So that... Yeah, I... Like, I'm trying to be understanding. I'm trying to be a little patient with Laurent because, again, stunted emotional intelligence, not really, yes, you know, going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not really having been trained or taught, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. I'm trying to be a little patient with him, but this child is going to get Daryl killed and... Uh, it's like, I know Daryl is not going to abandon this child. And I know that that's in his nature now. He, he tries to help people. But don't you got some children across the pond that you need to be trying to get back to? You you need to be worrying about your children. Children who know better. <laughs> right. Right. Children who know better. Right. Because when they say, he say, stay here, I'll be back what they do. Stay there. Well, in Carl, Carl didn't most of the didn't time. Listen to no fucking and Carl is an exception to the rule. And Carl could, could have himself. Left, he wasn't left to Daryl's tutelage, only Daryl. He still had other. Yeah. He, he's Lori's kid. Leave and it. Carl knew how to take care of himself. Carl was yeah, not, you know, yes, he had his moments where he did some stupid shit. But yes, he did. He learned from those. He did. We'll because he didn't that. want to be dependent on all the adults to take care of him. He wanted to be looked at as a man, like, oh, I can help protect y'all too. So it's a little bit different. But again, we we can't really compare those children to Laurent because they have a different experience than than True. Laurent has had. But True. at the same time, it's like Ooh, can we can we just take Laurent and just go across go back to the stakes? Because obviously, I and I know he he's your Messiah. Y'all need him for whatever, whatever. Can we take him across the pond and let him get a little bit older? Let him get a little bit more. Um, figure some shit out. Right. Let and him learn. By, some more by stuff. next season, he will. He's gonna have to because okay, this is so, learning. So they've already um today is like today is august 19th i think so we've already had comic con we've already seen some of the season two preview stuff and we will do a a reaction to the trailer and all of that um at a later date right now we're we're trying to prep for dragon con so that's taking a lot of our uh time but the actor who plays laurent he is already the same height as norma reed is now like <laughs> 
you're going to have to do a time jump or something in there because this dude does not look like this same innocent 12, 13 year old in here. He looks like he's about 16, 17 now and can kick some butt. So I don't know what y'all about to do with his character for season two. Or even if we're going to see his character a lot because season two is the book of Carol. We're going to get some Carol. We're going to see some Carol. And I don't know how that storyline is going to work, but y'all going to have to do something with Laurent because he can't keep he and can't quickly. Keep acting the way that he is acting. And thinking he ain't going to get fucked up. Right. But also, y'all got to give, I hate to say, y'all got to give Daryl a reason. Well, I guess that would be a reason for Daryl to stay because Daryl is probably looking at this kid like, if I leave now, he's going to be dead within three. Oh, minutes. yeah, he's going to be dead in 10 minutes. So he's like, okay, I, maybe I should stay and train him or teach him something. So that could be why Daryl decides to stay. But right now, I'm looking at Daryl like, um, excuse me, sir, you have your own responsibilities across the across the pond. Yeah, you go handle your business. With them children's. Right. Because I, mean, I think he yeah. said something. I'm trying to remember if it was in one of these first few episodes or if it was towards the end where he was like, yeah, I'm thinking about the people I left behind, wondering if they're still thinking of me. You really think they're going to forget about you after 15 years? Really? Sir, really? Please stop playing. That's what we're doing? Please stop playing. I'm going to need you to stop. Because if anything, you know Carol... And if nothing else, you. you know Carol ain't ever going to forget about you. Even when y'all wasn't speaking. She still came out in them woods and found you in fucking dog. Mm -hmm. Right. After your little matching braces and everything. Right. So, I'm... <laughs> You know what? I need you to wrap up whatever it is over here that you're wrapping up, which of course we can't do now because he's on a boat about to take Laurent to the nest and the nest is wherever the hell it is in France. But I I need you do. I need you to figure this out and go home. Quickly. You got some shit to do. Lots of it. Plus, I still need to know if that was Rick that Carol was talking about. Rick is back on the radio, so I need you to go figure out who who came back, because I need to know where all of these convergent stories are going. You holding at. out for everybody, everybody waiting on you to get the news. So right, right, chop chop. I need you to get back to the states, because also you got a lot of explaining to do. Because you know, once you tell everybody where you've been, they're gonna be like, "Huh? How the fuck you get the friend? How that happened?" <laughs> Which I still think the way that they did it was very uh very believable as far as stories go because other than that you couldn't have told me that daryl was going to be in france daryl probably has never left georgia that part up until yeah, he started true. traveling with them yeah but laurent 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 whooping 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 right but i will say this too the fact that isabel felt like she had to go back to quinn Ooh. So that they could get away. Daryl was not feeling that. I'm telling you, I still feel like they trying to throw a little Ugh, don't do a, it. a little romantic vibe in there with Please them. Don't. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like they're I'm trying not here to, for that at all. I, I'm not either, but I feel I feel like I see it's kind of like I kind of feel like his relationship with Isabel for me, I will say this for me. It's similar to the one he has with Carol. Like I can see the kind of sort of romantic undercurrent that that's there, but it feels more like it should be a sibling type relationship. Mm -hmm. But I almost feel like I see them pushing this one more than I've ever seen them push the whole Carol and Daryl thing. But even 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 um, she said when. The other nun, I can't think of her damn name. Sylvie. Like, uh, yeah, so when Sylvie was like, um, when after she had kissed the boy, mm -hmm. and she asked um, Isabel then, and she was like, no, that's just concern. But but you really think she's going to be honest and say, yeah, I kind of like it? No, because half of them are saying that. I mean, think about it. Connie and Daryl say that about each other. We know that there's some interest there with those two mm -hmm. characters. So... 
like I said, I don't I don't know if I feel like they're gonna push it, but it does seem like they're kind of making that little suggestion, like, oh, we're gonna dangle this in front of y'all and see how y'all take it. But you know, like and I don't know if it's that or if it's just that Daryl just has that kind of way with the women on this show because it's not like I mean people complain and say oh I don't see this care chemistry with this person or whatever but every person that Daryl has been with there's always been like an undercurrent of what could mm -hmm. be flirtation and then there's the establishing of whatever because the way that they wrote certain things you could have seen like a lot of people see it with Carol a lot of people see it with Connie some people saw it with Beth. Some people saw it with um, Rosita once they got to the Commonwealth. Because I even with that, I was kind of looking like, are y'all going to try to make them? But no, th that one was more so an establishment of like a brother-sister relationship. But those little hints and suggestions are always there. But you can't be liking her. I think over they do France. that because you know it's it's so much. Remember, so much was going around about oh, who's gonna be Daryl Love interest? Who you know who 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 who? That I think they do that just to keep people a little interested in it. But we already know we don't want Daryl with no goddamn body. Yeah, because he's not Connie, gonna be with anybody. If I mean, it ain't Connie, we good. Yeah. Or anybody, I mean, we he's just not, it's just not destined for him, to be honest. I And you know what? I kind of feel like that, too. Like, Daryl doesn't yeah, and have it's, to have and a girlfriend. It, yeah, and it's okay. Or a boyfriend, yeah. because I know there are some people who were like, oh, well, he kind of him and him. Jesus. With, with, um, I think more so like with Aaron, Aaron and Eric. Mm -hmm. But even, even with that, even if that was the case, I don't need him to have a boyfriend either. Daryl yeah, can be like, right it's and, like, and that's what it yeah that's what it but i think that's like. also why i like his and carol's relationship because especially when they were at the prison all of the little fun stuff is kind of like you can kind of read it as them being flirty but it's also like Car uh carol is making fun of him or just kind of putting it out there like oh yeah people think we're together but no we're not if mm -hmm. you know it's, it's just one of those things where i just don't feel like daryl needs that and it's it's too complicated i mean think about it he had a whole year and a half relationship with leah and you see how that went so and he had the shooter right right so yeah i just i don't need to see it but the fact that she felt like she had to go back to quinn i was just like that was like she did that on her own i think part of her want to see how that's gonna play out Unfortunately, yeah, because I'm sorry, all the stress and, and shit you going through to make sure Laurent gets to where Laurent needs to get to. And then at the end, you're just going to be like, all right, you got it from here. <laughs> what? No. No. Part of her still gave a fuck about Quinn, like at the end of the day, even though he wasn't shit, even though he fucked her sister, part of her still gave a fuck about him. I think probably it's more so because they have a shared past. Mm -hmm. And it's not many people left that you have one with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially her, because I don't think she has anybody left because she was a stranger to the convent. Yeah. So aside from Quinn and her sister and, you know, I think the little girl was the only other person that we really saw she had a connection with. Mm -hmm. We already know what her fate is, so... Yeah, I can see it. And it's it, it was just kind of weird when she walks in because when she walks in the place and um, what's her name? Anne is coming down the stairs. She just kind of turns to look at Anne and she turns back around like, okay, I understand you his woman, but I already know he wants me here. I'm here. I'm just, I got to make sure my nephew is safe. Yeah, his son. And it's almost like Quinn, Quinn expected her because even before he turned around he felt her presence behind him because you saw that mm -hmm. kind of little smirk and then he turned around and looked like what do we have here look at him I was just like oh this is about to be trouble 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 
Because if Quinn don't give her give her a headache, Anne is about to. Anne is about to. <laughs> Woo! Talk about a woman scorned. But you know what? Maybe she won't be like that towards Isabel. She'll probably be like that more so towards Quinn. Because Quinn is the one who's like Ain't she? Get over it. Right. And he's the one who apparently is still like in Finally. love with her. Can't get over her. I mean, and and literally brushing Anne to the side. And I mean, I, I but I, Anne ain't gonna go nowhere. You remember we in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. I was she, just about to say, yeah, about like, say she really doesn't have gonna... anywhere else to go. That's why I was like, if I was her, I just used the gun when his henchmen come up and be like, "What you do?" He gave me the gun. I didn't think she was gonna shoot Daryl or or Laurent. No, no, I didn't think so either. Mm-mm. Trying to prove a point. I'm not sure what the point was, but hey, she was trying to prove it. I think. <laughs> I think she was trying to make it seem like, okay, so she could go back to Quinn and say, well, I, I almost did. I tried. But I think in that moment, she was probably looking at Daryl like, you know, I know you're a pain in his asshole right now, but you are really the answer to my problems right now. Because what she said, what I look like a baby? <laughs> right. Like, did he even tell her, oh, that's my son, or was that something she had to deduce just by the way he was acting and stuff that he said? So, yeah, he about to have a problem with that one. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to turn on him. She may be like, oh, you want your old girlfriend back? Okay, bet. Let me go find one of your competitors, or let me go find, let me go talk to Madame Janae and be like, hey, Madame Janae. What can I do for you? I can tell you now he never had the American and he had the boy and he lied to you about both. I don't see her doing all that. I, I don't know now. What what is it they say? Hell hath no wo- uh fury like a woman scorned. Yeah, right. And... She is definitely a woman scorned. So she might do it. She might be like, hey, Madam Janae, you know, we don't we don't really have a lot. Uh, in this world anymore where women are the leaders. How about you do a sister solid? Yeah. Madam Janae will kill her first. You think? Yes. I think Madam Janae will probably use her as a spy. Like, oh, okay, so you're hearing Quinn's thing. You know, if she, if she were to go to Madam Janae and say, yeah, he didn't have the American. He does have, he did have the boy. And his whole thing is he trying to get his old girlfriend back. What you need? What else you need to know? Madame Janae will probably use that. Now she probably kill her later, but I think she would use that because that's a valuable piece of intel to have. Someone who's there, uh, who supposedly is Quinn's. I guess she was the girlfriend before he realized Isabel was back, and then he just broke up with her, but he just didn't tell her that he broke up with her. I mean. I I would probably tell, I would be singing like a canary. Like, oh, you want to know this? Oh, here you go. Oh, he also has this many weapons. He has money stashed in this place. Yeah, what else, what else you want to know? What else <laughs> you want to know? Help me get out of here. Help me, help me ascend. I don't see why she would. Ascend right to the ground where she put you. Mm-hmm. Because she going to kill her. Madam Janae, I think, is one of those people. She always got a motive. And until once you have served your purpose, I no longer need you. Yeah. So she she would keep her around for a little bit, little minute. But a- after what she needs is done, oh, she's going to kill her. Kill the hell out of her. She's going to be one of the experiments, hell. Oh, I hope not. Because just from what we've seen, just a little bit with these walkers and these weird burning walkers, and mm, they look gross and they look like they had a painful death. No, let's not do that. And it's sweet. Like, what was it Laurent said? You are nice, but you don't want people to know you're nice. She's nice. Leave her alone. Okay. Leave her alone. Queen going to make her mean, though. Queen going to make her mean. Uh, yeah, uh, hell yeah. Uh, yeah. He is. But um, oh, also, 1, I agree. Well, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, also, Quinn didn't have any of the people guarding the inside of his uh club when Daryl 
broke in. Like Daryl broke in. He had old girl with the gun. That was her job. She was the guard. She was the guard of Laurent in an upstairs room that was closed. But she was the guard. Let her be the guard. Haven't we had this conversation about the, the lack of real security in these shows? Yeah. <laughs> That's who he chose. Mm. So, if anything happens, kind of his own fault. Mm. Okay. I look at it. Whatever. But yeah, I, I just want to see what she's going to do now that Isabel's back. Because you... I... I hope he's not expecting her to like be the one to wait on Izzy hand and foot or whatever it is. I mean, we don't even know what is going to happen here. We just know Isabel went back because she figured, oh yeah, he wants me. Like he's using Laurent to get to me. Like, dude. I don't, I don't even see Izzy doing all that. Like, yes, she went back for the purpose, but I don't see her giving in. I don't see her folding and being like, oh, I'm, I love you. We should be together. No. No. I don't see that. She's going to convert back to the ways that she needed to in order to get what she needed out of him like she was before. She yeah. gonna, same way she used them tricksters and got them keys out of her, his pocket. Mm -hmm. And his ass standing in the middle of the street. Yeah. yeah. And he would be wrong to trust her 100%. Period. You know what the fuck she did. You know what she left. You know, you know, they both have done wrong to each other. Mm -hmm. And so to just right. blindly, either one of them, oh, welcome back to the fold. No. Right. But she had her reasons for doing it. I will say that. And she I, I'm not justified. saying she's not wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying she's not wrong, but I'm saying he'd be dumb as hell to just be like, all right, cool. You back? Yeah, no. Yeah. Like you don't blindly trust that. Because you did wrong. You you did real wrong. Yeah. You, you really left me in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, stole my car, and left me in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. So but I'm not just going, although I like want you back, him. I'm not just going to blindly have you back. Yeah, he's going to have to put some uh, stipulations in place. But he don't, I don't know, he don't seem like he too bright either because one, like I said, you're treating the current girlfriend crappy and then you give her a loaded gun to guard your son then when daryl and laurent are getting ready to uh escape and you see him across this bridge you run and rush him like if old boy and his gorilla soldiers can't handle one american you really think you beat? like do you know see the look of Daryl across and like, then you, you could have came at him you could have walked up to him and just started swinging and you might have had a better chance but you ran towards him you really didn't think he was going to pick you up and drop your ass on this bridge what are we doing he he, he wasn't no believer <laughs> I bet you he was when he woke up and Bur realized his ass got laid the fuck out laid out laid just down and LeBron just looking like this nigga <laughs> I think LeBron was he was probably feeling a little torn there because even though he knows that Quinn is his dad I don't think he un, I don't think he knows yet the circumstances of how that came to be so I think he was probably you know, looking at him like yeah. yeah he's probably looking at him like Okay, I don't want to be here with him, but he is still technically my dad, so I kind of for, sort of feel sorry for him right now, but no, I'm going to go with Daryl because right Daryl can keep he him alive. right over him. Yeah, because he knows Daryl can keep him alive and Daryl's going to take him back to his auntie. Quinn is that like... Mm -hmm. man, like he was nothing. Yeah, that's okay. He wasn't nothing. Not against Daryl anyway. Like you <laughs> ran at him really. Daryl looked at you like of course. And and Daryl was looking at him like, what you gonna do? What we doing? And you ran at him for I'm I, I'm honestly well, you know, he probably didn't want to do it in front of Quinn because even when he had the knife at his throat, he looked up. I mean, he didn't want to do it in front of Laurent because even when he had his knife at his throat, he looked up. 
at Laurent, saw Laurent looking. He was like, okay, I'm not going to do this. But Dabba really could have picked that dude up and threw him over that uh, over that bridge. This is why I thought he should have did, but really could have done that. But then you would have then you would have a walker inside the building because Dabba wouldn't bother to uh, stab Hell him no. in the head. Hell no, so, not at all. Would have gave not never another thought about it. Yeah, he'd have been like he need to turn. So anyway, Daryl and Laurent are off to the nest, which means Daryl is probably not going home anytime soon. I'm just like, no. how long is he going to have to babysit this child? And are they even going to make it to the nest at this point? Because you got yeah. Falou and Emil and Sylvie and Isabel still in Paris. You got this new person, Aslan, who is uh captaining the boat that they're on but we don't know anything about him he could be somebody bad he could be somebody who uh, you know, I don't see think so they trust him too much they got a little too much trust in going on they got trust they trust every goddamn body and with somebody everybody, who's supposed believe what everybody say you trust somebody who's supposed to be the messiah Y'all just sending him off with everybody. And granted, yes, I understand y'all have this movement. Y'all are allies. But Quinn could have paid old dude and be like, yo, so I need you to bring this boy. They're gonna come, they're gonna come to you. They're gonna be looking for a way out of Paris. When he comes to you, I need I need you to bring them to me. I need you to divert them. Here's I don't I don't know what the going currency is. For something like this, because obviously Quinn wasn't taking all the other stuff. He was like, I just want the painting. And he just wanted the painting because he knew Isabel liked the painting. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the coin uh what the going rate is for, you know, betraying somebody, but he could be. Could be. But I mean, even if he is, he on a boat with Daryl Dixon. That's not gonna that's not gonna work out well for him. So Mm -hmm. but this is what fourth episode so now we have two episodes left for this season and then we Three. already know it's seven episodes what's it yeah six is it six six I thought I said I thought I watched four of seven <laughs> let's see more episodes. Oh no, it's six. No, it's six. Mm -hmm. See, I was right. <laughs> you, <clears throat> but we already know that season two is coming. The Book of Carol. We've already seen a couple of previews on it, and I believe the first eleven minutes of it um, is available on AMC Plus and YouTube. I think the first eleven minutes of Daryl Dixon season two. Oh, oh, yep. Mm -hmm. and then we already know that they have been renewed for season three and season three is taking place uh they are filming in madrid spain so obviously that means that daryl dixon ain't going home no time soon no. which means that carol has to come to france because you can't tease us with the book of carol and then don't give us a reunion or if they give us one of those where they're almost reunited at oh the god I oh no and it has to hold Whole so, season so away. Right. So, but anyway. <laughs> very so, end. so we know we're getting season three. Um, do we have anything else to talk about with this? Wait a episode? second. We get a season three. I missed that. Mm-hmm. They announced it um Comic Con weekend, I think. Or they may have no, they may have announced it earlier than that, but they confirmed it. Comic We're talking about Daryl? Mm-hmm. So what is this gonna be? Book of who? I don't know, but they're they're, they're filming in Spain. Oh my goodness! Okay, it can't be. We can't be a book of nobody. Everybody. I mean, unless they. I don't. Do. Unless I don't they do. bring a Rick. I don't I'm see this. Rick. No. Rick, like I, I need that, to go get really my brother. I'm gonna turn into a dead city here. Mm -mm. No, 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 because this. Okay, we're just we're gonna not, be making stuff up. We're not gonna disparage dead city. Okay, I'm not. Not I'm right not. now. <laughs> but, I'm positive. 
I'm positive that things should be limited series. Well, you know what? I'm I'm thinking maybe that third season will be the last. It should because granted, it's nice seeing things from a different perspective, different country, whatever. I don't know if them filming in Madrid means that the story is moving to Madrid or if they're just using that as backdrop for other other parts of the story. But can we get Daryl to go home? Daryl needs to go home. Daryl got children there who who he's supposed to be taking care of. And I realize at some point go home that other people are there and they okay. are the epitome of it takes a village to raise a child. But still, Daryl need to go home. Mm -hmm. So I really don't want four or five, six seasons of this show. I need, especially now that we know that Rick and Michonne are home. I need to see that reunion. I need it in my bones. So don't be shaking your because head. Because you Michelle know, once he got home. home, he's asking, well, where, where are my people? Of course. And you know, that's going to be a hard conversation because half his people gone. But Daryl is still alive. Carol is on the lookout for him. We know this. So mm -hmm. yeah, season three, y'all need to be heading your ass back to the States. If you got to take Laurent, back to the states with you if you gotta take izzy back to the states with you if you gotta take sylvie back to the states with you, take them but i need daryl to go home so I, sir we're gonna be outside uh, uh, we're gonna be in paris and madrid with signs go home <laughs> right go home now <laughs> right uh do you guys have anything else about this episode that we need to talk about. Michelle is looking like you did good. No. <laughs> no. Why you why you got that look, Michelle? I mean, it I mean it was it was a kind of I wanna say a little bit dull of an episode for mm -hmm. me. So no, there's nothing left. Okay. It was a little slow. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, before we end this episode, I am going to put all of this stuff out there. The three ladies here on this podcast right now, myself, Michelle, and Casey, we are nominated for the Women in Podcasting Awards in the entertainment category. So mm -hmm. what we would like for you guys to do is to go to the website. And of course, I got to put my glasses on because I can't see. But it's um, womeninpodcasting.net slash awards slash voting. And what you'll do is you will put in your name and your email address. And then you will go to the um, entertainment category and select Phantom Hybrid Podcast. You are only allowed one vote per email address. And voting will conclude on October 1st first so if you guys don't mind showing us a little love going to that website and voting for us again it's women and podcasting.net um and aside from that that is it for our show you can find us online at www.fandomhybrid.com we are on social media on all the social media at fandom hybrid you can chat with us on our Discord channel. You can watch our videos on our YouTube channel and you can listen to us on all major podcast streaming events. Did I say events? You did. And you can listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.